Okay, as you like the, uh, all of you are likely know, then skeletal muscle and peripheral insulin action are indeed highly intertwined. So if you have an increase in blood glucose, that will have an effect on the pancreas, which will respond by secreting insulin. The circulating insulin can then affect various tissues throughout the body. Of particular importance for this talk and in general is, uh, is skeletal muscle. So it's been shown that up to 80% of the insulin-mediated glucose disposal actually occurs within uh, skeletal muscle. Uh, furthermore, there is a, a general consensus that regular exercise training uh, increases tissue responsiveness to this circulating insulin. However, in, in recent years, it has, been, been it has become apparent that there is a pronounced inter-individual uh, variability in terms of the training-induced response. So, for instance, in the uh, heritage data set that Claude Bouchard talked about a few days ago, they have actually shown there is a, a marked inter-individual heterogeneity in the training-induced change in peripheral insulin sensitivity. And they used a frequently sampled intravenous glucose tolerance test in order to, to estimate the peripheral insulin sensitivity. Furthermore, due to the uh, design of the heritage data set, which is a family-based study, we have been able to calculate that roughly around 30% of this variability or variance can be accounted for by, by family membership. Hence, this suggests that there could be a, a significant genetic component to this variability. In uh, further support of this, Claude Bouchard and colleagues uh, some years ago published a paper where they, uh, where they compared those that show uh, uh, a massive increase in peripheral insulin sensitivity following the training intervention, compared the transcriptome of those with, 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 with another group that either show none or an adverse response. And they're actually able to demonstrate that the, transcri that the transcriptome at baseline uh, is different between these two groups. So, due to the uh, extensive omics profiling of the heritage uh, participants, so we have uh, GWAS data for all 500 whites, as well as gene expression in skeletal muscle for around 50 subjects, we decided to see whether we could tease out some of this potential genetic component related to, to the training-induced variability. So the first thing we did was to, to focus on the GWAS data. So we went through all of these 325,000 profile SNPs, associated the genotype with the change in insulin, in insulin sensitivity using a, an additive linear model. We then mapped all these SNPs onto the nearest protein coding gene. And here we focus specifically on, on those SNPs that are within a, a, a 20 kilo base flanking window around the, the nearest transcribed gene. We then further map all these genes onto to CAC pathways and ask the question whether we can, can see any enrichment in terms of SNPs being associated to, to change in insulin sensitivity in, 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 in any of these pathways. So I bind all of these p-values within a given pathway and ask the question whether there is an, an over-enrichment in, in SNPs in, in this lower end of, 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 the, uh, of, the, uh, of the axis. I did that for all CAC pathways and were able to identify a number of, of pathways that are indeed enriched in these delta SI associated SNPs. Uh, if we try to group these pathways into to more functional terms, we're able to, to see that it's, you can say it seems to be calcium signaling, carbohydrate metabolism and cell, cell communication that seems to be enriched. Um, I then went one step further. so. Uh, decided to try to associate the, uh, the genotype of these SNPs with the basal mRNA abundance within skeletal muscle. Uh, that, uh, I, I did that due to the fact that, that at least 90% of all SNPs actually fall outside of the protein coding region, indicating that they likely have a more regulatory role. So I went through this list of, of, of profile SNPs and I was able to identify roughly 1,500 SNPs that are actually significantly associated to the basal mRNA abundance of the nearest transcribed gene. I then mapped all these SNPs onto CAC pathways and asked the question whether I can see an, an, an over-enrichment in so-called expression SNPs within, uh, within a given pathway. As you can see, there was a number of pathways that fall to the right of this red line, indicating they, that they are indeed enriched in these so-called expression SNPs. Particularly, I would like to point your attention to two pathways, one being the vascular smooth muscle contraction pathway and the other one being the calcium signaling pathway, as they appear to be the most enriched ones. I then went another step further. This time I relied on a computational approach. I decided to try to infer the, you can say, the activity of transcription factors within muscle uh, at baseline. 
in order to, to do this, I, I associated the basal mRNA abundance of all genes that are actually transcribed in skeletal muscle with the change in, in, in insulin sensitivity. I ranked all of these uh, muscle genes uh, according to how well they associate. And then I went into the Broad Institute database in order to pull out uh, a list of transcription, fi transcription factors as well as the transcription factor, the uh, annotated transcription factor target genes for a given transcription factor. I then uh, asked the question whether there was an enrichment in either the positive or the negative end of this ranked list in any of these gene sets. And out of roughly 600 uh, gene sets, I was able to identify two that are significantly associated with uh, enriched in the positive end, meaning that those that show the, 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 the most pronounced increase in insulin sensitivity also present with slightly higher uh, gene expression of, 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 of the genes of a given transcription factor. We uh, identified two, so we identified splicing factor one as well as the myocyte enhancer factor two. Due to the fact that the uh, splicing factor one is involved in, in, in spliceosome complex formation and hence not what I would define as a traditional transcription factor, we uh, focused a bit more on the MEF2 transcription factor. This was justified by the fact that the MEF2 has been extensively studied in, in skeletal muscle cells, as well as the fact that the MEF2 complex are actually sits downstream of the calcium signaling pathway. Uh, so we then, due to, we have now multiple, multiple data that point to the calcium signaling pathway as well as the uh, MEF2, which sits downstream, asked, uh, hypothesized that this MEF2 transcription factor might be a key driver of the pleiotropic transcriptional response that are associated to, uh, to, uh, to delta SI. So I went into the literature. I was able to find a paper published a few years ago in, in nucleic acid research where they have used SI RNAs in order to knock down the expression of the alpha form of the MEF2 transcription factor. They used an uh, in vitro uh, model, so they used C2C12, differentiating C2C12 myotubes and used global mRNA profiling in order to identify dysregulated mRNAs. As you can see here, they found almost uh, 1,300 mRNAs being dysregulated following the SI RNA treatment. So we then asked whether this MEF2A dependent signature can mimic the transcription signature that is associated to, to change in insulin, in insulin sensitivity within the heritage data set. So I went back to the rank list on the previous slide, and this time I generated two custom gene sets. One consisted of those gene, gene targets that are upregulated following the loss of MEF2A, and the second gene set contained the downregulated uh, targets. So as you can see here, if we then mapped on all the genes that are downregulating, uh, containing the downregulated MEF2A targets, the, uh, the software were able to identify an, an enrichment in, in the positive end of this rank list, and this fits well with, with our hypothesis. We then uh, asked the same question. This, this time we looked at the, uh, at the second gene set, which contained the upregulated MEF2A targets, and indeed we were able to find an, a significant enrichment in the lower end of the rank list. So uh, there was a, a very successful in, in silico validation, so to speak. Due to this validation, I, I decided to ask the question whether the basal mRNA abundance of these MEF2A interacting targets are in any shape or form predictive of the change in insulin sensitivity within heritage. So I went into the string database and pulled out all, all functionally, uh, physically functionally interacting MEF2A targets. So here we are talking about, the, uh, about a number of 46. I then developed all possible multivariate regression models, and as you can see here in this table, this is the most predictive model, uh, which was able to explain 50% uh, of the variability within the heritage data set. Uh, as you can see, we had uh, the CAM kinase 2, D, and G, as well as uh, HDAC4 within the model. And importantly, due to the fact that genes do not act in isolation, but act, interact with each other collectively, I included interaction between gene products. And as you can see here, the model is actually able to, to pick up an association between various gene, gene products. And finally, uh, I added uh, Genta as well as the weight adjusted uh, aerobic capacity as, a, as covariates within the model. So we now have a, have a signature that seems to, to predict well within the heritage data set. Obviously, in order to, to have more confidence in this signature, we wanted some sort of, of independent validation. 
So I went into the gene expression omnibus. I was able to find a 12-week training study that consisted of overweight to obese men. <coughs> Importantly, all of these men had a hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamp performed at baseline and post-training. So I uh, asked the question whether I could predict the, the uh, training-induced change in, in insulin sensitivity within, the, uh, within this study. And then obviously once I've done that using the model on the previous slide, I try to associate with what they actually see. And as you can see here, there seems to be very good concordance between the observed and the estimated variability. In fact, we are able to explain almost 40% of the, uh, the training-induced variability in peripheral insulin sensitivity in this independent study. So this project or this study thereby extends on the notion that transcriptomic profiling uh, do capture critical information and process some sort of prognostic information about fairly complex physiological processes. Uh, yeah, and just some acknowledgement.